All right. So I'm going to talk about do numbers lie? I'll come back to that. But for now, let me start with a quote from President Trump's State of the Union address just one month ago. African-American unemployment rate stands at lowest rate ever recorded. Impressive, right? The suggestion here, if you were to look back and look at his tweets, you realize that, um, hey, we all have his policies to thank for. Here's another example. Now, this time, let's rewind our clock back to the last election in 2016. So Mr. Evan Bai, Democrat from Indiana, he was running for the US Senate. Okay, so he had served in the Senate before. So this ad attacked him for voting with then President Obama 96% of the time, 96%, wow. The suggestion here is quite obvious. This guy is just so partisan. Do not vote for him. Okay, so these are powerful statements with powerful suggestions. But let's, for now, just ignore the suggestive parts and focus on the factual claims, like, you know, lowest rate ever, or 96%, what do they have in common? First of all, they're both based on numbers. And numbers are great. Whenever you use numbers, they automatically make your claim look more believable. Second, not only numbers. You can also get the data to verify these numbers. For example, from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, you know, lowest rate ever, or 96%. What do they have in common? First of all, they're both based on numbers. And numbers are great. Whenever you use numbers, they automatically make your claim look more believable. Second, not only numbers. You can also get the data to verify these numbers. For example, from the Bureau of Labor Statistics or from congressional records. So great, another stamp of approval, right? Now this is number backed by data. And indeed, if you go ahead and take the effort and check these claims, what do you find? They're both factually correct. End of discussion, right? Except that unfortunately, in spite of being factually correct, claims can also mislead. For example, yes, yes, indeed, black unemployment rate has been at the lowest level ever, but if you were to put this claim in the larger historical context, you will realize that this rate has been in steady decline for the past seven years, long before our current president took office. So there. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm just always picking on our president. The sad truth is that these sort of claims are everywhere around us across ideologies, across cultures. And these are nothing new. They have been with us throughout history. In fact, I'm going to quote from this very interesting book titled How to Lie with Statistics, written probably long before many of you were born. And here's the quote. If you torture the data long enough, it will confess to anything. I'm going to tell you how to torture the data. OK, so you've got some data, right? OK, say congressional voting records. You want to do some analysis on it. Say I want to calculate how often people voted with Obama. Now, you can think of this analysis as a black box. OK, so it takes data as input, crunch on some numbers, and outputs a number, say 96%, which you get to stick into your claim. Now, what's interesting about this black box is that it's got these knobs, okay? So, for example, one knob may control who we're comparing. Another knob may control the time period of comparison, like over the last month, last year, last 200 votes, whatever. Yet another knob may control what goes into the calculation, 
Do you include votes that are procedural? Do you include nominations? So on and so forth, all those technical details. Now, even for a simple analysis, there could be a lot of knobs. You may not realize all of them, but uh, you know, they still exist. This is where the torture comes in, because you can tune these knobs. You tune, the result changes. You keep tuning until you get what you want. 60%, no, 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 no. 70%, ah, still boring. 80%, we're talking. 96%, bingo, right? That's also called cherry picking, data dredging. There are lots of other names for it. Now, if this has been going on forever and ever in our history, what's the big idea now? Well, thanks to technology, we've got more data than ever before. And increasingly, important decisions are driven by and justified by data. And there's more opportunities than ever, and also temptation to use the data to generate these quote unquote half-truths, and you will see them everywhere. They can be used to bias public opinions. They can be used to control discourse, narratives. They can be used to justify actions, sometimes with serious consequences. So you see, data and numbers really don't automatically make us any safer. Actually, what I would argue, we need more fact-checking instead of less. And as we have discussed, this is really, really hard work, right? Because you have to check beyond just correctness. So as a computer scientist, I ask, is there any way that I can help? Is it possible for algorithms to actually help us with this? We figured out one way to do it. Um, the idea is really remarkably simple. It's embarrassing. You torture the data even more. <laughs> okay, now, now, now I realize I, I use the term torture quite a lot in this talk, but I assure you, no bits or pixels were ever harmed in the production of this talk. <laughs> so, so there, we have a claim, which is based on some analysis over the data. Yeah? And this analysis comes with a particular setting of its knobs, which in essence captures what particular view of the data that the claim wants you to see. But there is no reason why we should blindly trust that particular view. So instead, what we're going to do, we're going to go in and tweak these knobs more, a lot more, and we're going to see how they impact the conclusion of the claim. By exploring a lot of possible knob settings, we actually expose this larger context in which we can evaluate the original claim. You can ask how robust it is, you can ask how unique it is, and so on. Now, this is hard work, and this is why this doesn't get done often enough. But hey, that's the type of the work that computer is really great at. So we can develop algorithms that will help us tirelessly and meticulously tweak these knobs and synthesize this much bigger context for us to fact check with. Indeed, this is the approach we have taken. So together with a group of students and colleagues in Duke Computer Science and Public Policy, we set out and built a system for the last election that allow you to actually fact check statements based on congressional voting records. And here are some examples of the insights we were able to find. Yes, Mr. Evan Bai indeed voted with President Obama 96% of the time, but that was in 2010. Now you tweak this knob just a little bit to 2009. What do you see? that percentage drops to 77%. Yeah. Combine two years together, that gives you 85%. Still not as high as 96%, right? So in a sense, the original claim is not very robust because even with a small tweak, you can weaken its conclusion very drastically. Now you may still wonder, hey, 77%, maybe that sounds still a little high. So for that insight, you have to tweak a different knob. And this is a knob that controls who you're comparing. So by tweaking this knob, we see how the other senators voted with Obama. And this creates the bigger context in which you can evaluate Mr. Evan Bai's performance. Okay? So in this visualization, each bar is basically a senator. Okay, so the Democrats are blue, the Republicans are red, okay, and these bars are sorted according to their height. 
So the height of the bar indicates how often somebody voted with Obama. Now, in 2009, where do you think Mr. Evan Bai was? Well, he's all the way there in the red territory. As a matter of fact, he was a Democrat who agreed least with Mr. Obama, and in fact, less than even three of the Republicans. So there, 77% is not that high, it's quite low. Even 96% is not as high as what they would want you to believe. So our algorithms were able to find these insights and visualizations automatically for you. So to conclude my talk, let me ask this question again. Do numbers lie? No, I would say no. Numbers never lie. But you can lie with numbers. Okay. Second point, algorithms can help us fight lies with numbers. Great. But there's just one catch. I did not talk about this, but some of you might have noticed the same algorithms that tirelessly and meticulously tweak these knobs to help us fact check can also be used to tirelessly and meticulously cherry pick that knob setting that will advance your point of view, however biased that might be. So in other words, algorithms can also help us lie with numbers. This irony leads to my final point. Really, it's not about numbers or data or algorithms. It's about you. Because it is you who must choose wisely how you want technology to shape our future. Thank you for listening.